Hello, I'm Jenna Bosiger, and welcome to this episode of Cryptic Cryptids. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. I really do appreciate it. Native American Tribes, Cryptids of North America. In this episode, I take a deeper look into the list of names Native Americans have for Bigfoots. From the east to the west coast, they pretty much all had names for the giants. I was also able to put this list into a program and get some statistics from the list. And I found location to be a very important factor in all of this because I could I could pull up a hundred absolutely amazing pictographs of Bigfoot, but if I just showed them to you, they would lose their meaning because they're not in context. So what I try, what I'm going to try to do, and what I did for this episode is I focused, I narrowed it down to California, and I want to do that with this list. Find out where where these tribes were located, and then find out what the interaction or sightings or encounters were with the giants and the reasons that they gave them the names they did. Because some of these names range from wicked cannibal to, you know, elder brother. And I'm wondering why there's such a discrepancy between opinions about these Bigfoot creatures. So I'm going to take an in-depth look at not only the names, the tribes, the locations, the translations, the encounters, and the pictographs, and put them all together location by location by location. Loved hearing about Bigfoots and cryptids from Native American tribes. Unfortunately, much of their knowledge has been dismissed by scholars and academics, um, especially when they first came to America. And that's why so much that was normal to the tribes has never even been heard of by mainstream. And tales of Bigfoot and giants and other cryptids roaming North America sound like fantastical myths and legends when heard for the first time. Another thing is that most people who, well, anyone who even thinks about giants and Bigfoot, they think of them as being different, separate, two different species of creatures. But the Native Americans did not see that distinction between the two. There were the giants and they had big feet. You know, they were the same, one and the same, as far as the Native Americans are concerned. Um, as far as I know, too, you know, they didn't make any distinction between the two. And that changes a lot if you were to see, when you see the giants and the Bigfoot as being the same, because that means that the giants built stone monuments, the giants made art, weapons, tools, and the giants were civilized in some ways. And the line between humans and animals and spirit becomes blurred because they're not human, they're not animals. And so then they just automatically sometimes get put into this category of being supernatural because the idea of them being part animal and part human is just hard to, we want to categorize them in this black and white, either they're animals or they're humans. And, you know, they're just, I don't think they fall into either one of those categories. I'm not saying they're spiritual and supernatural either. I don't really know what they are, but I don't know of anything else that's like them, just like I don't know of any other creature on earth that's like humans. So giants were a part of Native American history, and there is a lot of information about them available, but you have to search for it because it's not going to be taught in a classroom because word of mouth is not considered a valid form of information or knowledge according to academics. So if you want to know about Native Americans from the Native Americans, 
you're not going to learn about that in a classroom. You're going to have to do this research yourself because academics about Native Americans is from the point of view of other people besides Native Americans, you know. So that's why it's taken quite a bit of searching to find out things about the giants, but there is a lot of information available when you do the searching. So in this video, I want the information about the giants to come from the Native Americans, not from an anthropology class or ethnology or evolution taught at a university. So it was important for me to include location into my investigation. And I know that sometimes I simplify investigation with a, a city or a state. And obviously these tribes did not have those boundaries and they covered a wider range. But just to kind of give you a general idea of the location of these tribes, I would kind of narrow it down. So, but they, they had usually wider ranges than what I mentioned. This is just to give you an idea of the location. I tried to narrow it down even to find where the pictographs of the Bigfoot were located and tried to narrow down the location as much as possible. Another interesting thing about that though is when we're talking about places like Death Valley, Joshua Tree, and the Coso Mountains, these tribes that are from those locations all talk about and evidence is supporting that there were giants there before the Native Americans got there. And possibly they were even the ones responsible for the pictographs there. So that kind of added another layer of, well, complication in a way. One of the questions I really, really want to know is whether or not it's true about the giants being cannibals, about Bigfoot being a cannibal, or about, you know, them eating babies and things of that nature. I've gathered this list of 45 tribe names for Bigfoot. Some of the tribes had more than one name for Bigfoot. So, out of all of these names and translations for Bigfoot, there's 45 of them, made a graph to find out how many of them refer to Bigfoot as being cannibals. How many of them refer to Bigfoot as being just a natural creature, you know, like hairy man. How many of them refer to Bigfoot as being supernatural? How many refer to them as being negative supernatural? And how many positive supernatural? How many positive and how many negative? So I got percentages on all of those and made a graph out of it. And it came up with some interesting results. The amount of just plain positive descriptions of Bigfoot, like for example, one described them as being protector of children and an ancient ancestor. That to me is a positive description of Bigfoot. So that's what would have been counted. There were six total of it out of the 45 and that gave it 8%, which is low, <laughs> a low number of positive descriptions. Now, negative descriptions, there were a few more. There were 13, which came to 18%. Supernatural descriptions were even higher at 17, 23%. And described as being supernatural and good, 3%. Supernatural and bad or evil, anytime I heard the word evil or demon, that would be bad and supernatural. So that is 11%. Natural descriptions got the highest number at 23 and 31%. And the number of descriptions that described them as being cannibals 
was only 5 at 7%. That's second lowest. So not very many tribes are describing them as being cannibals. I'm looking forward to finding out more about the giants from the Native Americans and anything I can find out about that section by section, location by location. And I've already started on California and so I'm looking forward to posting that next because I'm almost done with that video. I thought I was going to be able to combine these two but it looks like I'll need to make two videos. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. I really do appreciate it.